Hello friends, welcome to my channel PC Joe Kimberlite. Today we are going to see a practical from FYBAC Paleontology and that is a set two. So here we are going to see the three phylums, phylum Brachiopoda, phylum Echinodermata and phylum Orthopoda. So this will be theory as well as practical we are going to see so that you require certain the theoretical background when you are going to see these particular fossil when you are going to study in the hand specimen in the lab. So from the Brachiopoda we are going to study two uh, specimens. One is Stereopratula. It is a fossil that is completely petrified is there. And the second one is Pirifer. And this is we have the cast one and it is a little bit it is also some part has been broken out the specimen which we are going to show it out because there's a cast it is just made by the clay so that will be there next one is there the echinodermata from that echinoid uh, dermatas uh, we have uh, echinoid or that is uh, echinus is there that is not a echinoid it should be a echinus then microster these two echinus and microster we are going to study uh, from the echinodermata and class echinoidea that is there. Then next one from phylum orthopoda, we are going to see the calumene and paradoxide. These two are, uh, uh, we have the cast one. And in case of echinus, it, we have the original uh, test we have and microster, we have a fossil. So these six particular specimens, we are going to study from three different uh, phylums. In earlier first practical of uh, paleontology, we have seen the phylum mollusca and in that class lamellae branch, arca, unio, pectin we have seen. Then in gastropod, we have class gastropoda, we have seen uh, turitella and physa and third one uh, class uh, cephalopoda. From there we have seen uh, nautilus and cirati. Now these are again six in this practical we are going to see. Let's start. The phylum Brachiopoda, class Articulata and Inarticulata. Okay, so Articulata that is there. So that is spelling mistake is there. So I tried, but uh, so many PPTs I'm preparing at one a time and simultaneously I'm going for uh, videos, editing and all that. So that will be a minor error. So a human error is there. So it will be there. You are going to see that. So I apologize for that uh, particular uh, uh, spelling mistake that articulata, but in articulata is there. But now, from the whatever we are going to see the specimen today, both are from the articulata class. First, we'll see the uh, morphology. What are the characters of brachiopoda? A brachiopoda, which is there, it contains two shells. Yes, both shell. In case of lamellae branch, there also we have two shells. But in lamellae branch. If you join your two hands, they're exactly similar shell, or shells, are, shells are there. That is a wall we called as left wall and right wall. They're exactly matched. So Lamley branch, they are equivalent. But in case of brachiopod, you can see whatever we have shown you the diagram. See now, this is a perfect diagram. So if you just bend it out here, we have the, uh, what we have, the pedicle opening is there. That is the umbo is there. And this is one wall is, bigger one wall is smaller and wherever we have the pedicle opening is there that wall is called as pedicle wall here we have been shown here this is the wall where we have the pedicle is present it is a bigger one so here we have the bigger wall which is here yes so everywhere we were shown we have a fossilized specimen and these are the specimen from the department we have been shown the photo photographs i must thanks from for my uh, lab assistant then um, my student uh, uh, non background from the geology ncc especially they have taken the photograph and my lab assistant uh, mrs shaheen she has uh, shown them the what are the specimens are there and they are taken the uh, professional uh, with the camera they are taken the photographs and they send me in the us so i am preparing this video sitting in the us and uh, you are going to see you know shortly when i'm going to upload all my videos from us i'm uploading now so when i once the college will start at once i joining in my in the month of 
December or Jan, I'm going to join this department. Then at that time, whenever I have the free time, I'll go again going to reshoot this one with the chalk and board so that you can get and at that time you can get the specimen in hand and see the details uh, again in a new videos will be uploaded so that we can get the more clear pictures for about all whatever practicals which are going to tell. Now this is the practical where we have the brachiopoda we are going to say in this one wall is bigger one is small so in equivalent yes this is the first important term regarding brachiopoda is the walls are in equivalent but if you see, uh, bring it the pedicle wall and if you draw a vertical line yes in this particular diagram you can see now here i have drawn a vertical line here so the shell is exactly going to divide so it is equilateral but in case of Lamely branch. If you make out and if you want to draw a line from umbo one side, but this side we don't have, so asymmetrical is there. So it is in equilateral over there. But here in the case of Brachiopora, the whatever the shells are there, it is the equilateral. And here we have the hinge line is there. Yes, so that will be the part you can be going to see the various parts. To then this commis suture plane is there. You can see that will be shown. Yes, is there. The whichever the small is there, brachial wall, whichever the bigger one is there, that is the pedicle wall. And wherever the umbo is there, yes, that umbo is the posterior side. This is your opposite, is the anterior side. Yes, so there in the lamellae branch, what is happening? Dorsal side, ventral side. Wherever it is pointing, it is anterior side. So that is there. So that is also a difference between the lamellae branch. And brachiopod. So I'm going to make a separate video on um, similarities and dissimilarities between the uh, brachiopod and lamellae branch. That also we are. Uh, I'm planning now. So work is good. So, uh, I could once I finish this one, then I could go for that particular part also, and that we are going to see in you know, a shortly. But uh, today we are going to see this one. This is the what we have is the towards the posterior side the wall will be there and opening and closing from the lower side from the anterior side they are closing and opening muscle scar will be there which will be going to help into this and that will be the uh, part will be there and wherever the pedicle opening is there from this part the muscles comes out and the at the leaving when the animal is leaving the muscles comes out and it will attach to the rock bottom pedicle opening but that pedicle opening will be covered uh, by a plate deltidium plates so that will be there as yes, that is a 10 uh, calcareous plates will be there that is going to cover the body this is the thickness if you see the shell thickness this is the height of the shell and this is the length yes this is length these are the things when we are going to see the similarities and dissimilarities in that part we are going to have that video Again, you can see pedicle opening, brachial skeleton, foramen or pedicle opening, deltarial plates are there. These plates are going to cover uh, whatever we have, the foramens are there. Umbo is a prominent one. Yes, elevated portion umbo. Growth lines are there. Brachial skeleton, the smaller one. Fermi suture plane, along which the two planes are joined together. And here it is very good one. Fossilized one is there. You can see the combi suture is there. This is the umbo pedicle opening. Yes, and this is what we have pedicle wall, and this is the brachial wall. A same diagram again. I am going to repeat and so that you can get the more uh, visualization in that particular part. Yes, come to the next one. Description: how you are going to describe what exactly you have to do it in the practical. This will be given only the theoretical part, which is this is the whatever we are given you. This will be you are going to write in the journal, but in the examination, this will be the spotting is there. So what exactly you have to do in the practical, whatever the spot number say, now it will be changed because of now credit system is there. Practical also come in a credit system, wherever the spot is there. For example, this particular pterobrotula is coming at a table number five. So what do you have to write down? You have to write down the classification, phylum, class, genus, and range. 
these things has to be write down. So each one will get the half of marks. Yes, if the uh, phylum class will be there, that will be one mark for the classification. Half mark will be the genus and half mark will be the range. Next one, whatever the description is there, it is not required in the examination. We want a neat label diagram. So whatever you know, the parts you have to write down, draw the diagram, neat label diagram. So examiner will understood that you have been understood that particular part. So here what we have the terebratula is phylum brachiopoda, class articulata, terebratula genus, and it is from the ranges eocene to pliocene. I told you this is a petrified fossil. Two walls in equivalence, that is in equilateral, that is the in, in, in equivalence it is written, in equivalent, in uh, this is the equilateral, shells are biconvex, hinge line curve that we are seeing in the curvature is there. Yes, umbo ventral wall truncated by large circular foramen that is there that we are shown, and there is a pedicle opening is there. Yes, this is what we have the perfect pedicle opening. This is what we have the brachi, uh, bra uh, brachial uh, wall, pedicle wall, and this is the hinge line is curvature. Umbo will be there. So these are the parts we are shown. The growth line is there. Dorsal side, anterior side. Next one, we have a cast fossil. This is the cast fossil. And now it is see it is broken. Hinge line is straight, and this particular specimen is a somewhat triangular. There also what we have is a, if you see this particular part, it is a oval or somewhat a triangular. So that will be the shape. So that comes under the what we have the uh, forms of the brachiopods. What will shape, size, orientation. Ornamentation is there, but now we don't have to go into the detail. Phylum Brachiopoda, then class articulata, and genus is perifer, Silurian to Permian. Silurian to Permian is the range of this particular the sperifer. Class shell is there that I already we have seen from their diagram. You can uh, find out again, it is a biconical, both are the uh, triangle which have been there. Hinge line is straight and long. These are the Thing which we are going to make out is again ornamentation which are there, but we don't have the fossilized one. Yes, the ribs which are there to see the hinge line, so deltherium. So these are the by walls, dorsal. So all positions we have been taken out. Next one, phylum echinodermata and class echinoidium. This is what we have. The specimen uh, glass model is there because it is a more exoskeleton is there just if you press it out it will be broke out that is the echinus one so in this what we have the body is divided into three parts first one the shape of this particular uh, uh, echinoidea is there it will be divided into two categories regularia and irregularia so a is a regularia and b is irregularia now in these two what we have the so whatever the body is there it is composed of three parts the major part which is there, the corona. Then the next one, we have the apical disc and the and peristome. These are the two and the corona which is there. If they comes on along the imaginary line, there's the apical disc and peristome. Then this is the uh, centrosymmetry. As you now we will have the isosymmetry, centrosymmetry will be there. Then that will be the regular one. And uh, second one, if you draw from the center, yes, if you draw from the center, in all direction, we will find out there is the radial symmetry is there. As it is a radial symmetry is there, rounded or globular one, both sides it is compressed and it is a rounded one is there. And it is irregular, yeah, it is a heart shape. It is a heart shape and whatever the apical and peristome are not coming on the same line. So it is the irregular, yeah. so that is there. Now here, whatever we have the three parts are there, first we'll see the apical disc. The apical disc is made up of 10 plates. Apical plates which are there, they are the 10 plates. Out of the 10 plates, 5 are the bigger plates. These are called as the genital plates and 5 are the smaller plates. That is called as the ocular plates. And the next one, the corona which is there, which also contain the 10 plates. Out of the 10 plates, 5 are a smaller one and 5 are the bigger. 
and between the two bigger one this is one and this is two between this whatever the dark line what we have been drawn a small one this is the ambulacral area and this is the inter ambulacular areas now in this inter ambulacular areas we are going to see the rounded nodules are there nodes are there from that nodes spines is there so to protect this animal the spines are there so should not somebody should not be catch enemies so the spines are there tubercles are there these are there and these are the bigger one so we have five ambulacular areas and five inter ambulacular areas so the 10 plates over there the apical disc will be there which is contain also 10 plates here also you can see five are the smaller one and five are the bigger one so these are what we have the things which we are going to see the same one what we have shown the diagram that has been made over here again repeat the body is a tuber tubercles are there yes the rounded uh, what we have these are the tubercles so the what we specimen you can see this part which is there two tubes will be there small small say now the first specimen is that echinus phylum echino echinodermata class echinoidea and the genus is echinus pliocene to present it is there pliocene to the present tail is more or less hemispherical radial symmetry ambulacular area rather narrow and are perforated that is tubercles present inter ambulacular area is uh, areas large between the two ambulacular areas and peristrom rather small and circular so this is the part will be there and if you make out this diagram is required this is my diagram i have drawn the diagram the same diagram you have to draw it out in the examination and you have to label it out this one so five ambulacular areas and five inter ambulacular areas in the part of corona you have to draw then the apical disc then the 10 plates these are the 10 plates and towards the anterior side what we have the uh, genital plate is a very bigger one and this plate is called as metaporic plates yes and the rest one you can see one two this is three and four and this is the fifth so five we have the genital plates and in between the two genital plates we have the alternate ocular plates are there so if they are going to arrange side by side then the insert and if uh, exert also there so these are a uh, short uh, in the theory it will ask that i'm going to take it separately so no need to discuss here so that uh, part will be there so the five genital plates five ocular plates are there and in between we have the periproct is there in that we are going to have the anus will be there and mouth on the lower side so this is what we have the parts of this particular echinus and the next one is echinodermata echinoidea and microster so here we are going to have a heart shaped microster from the irregularia so if you make the subdivision over there in this it will comes under the category of irregularia and it is cretaceous to present yes again there is a again spelling mistake is there so again cut and paste so it is doubly repeated so we can make out cut out so it should be a cretaceous to present now what is the description is there test is heart shape divided into three parts apical disc corona and peristrome apical disc is small in this it you can see now it is very small situated in the center corona has five ambulacular areas and uh, five are the interambulacular areas so that will be there that will going to cover and hemiaster earlier one we are taking the hemiaster but now hemiaster we are not taking so tubercles will be there here yes cut and paste this is again a problem it should be a microaster one the hemiaster is there so so wherever i am pointing out be remembered now this is to be remembered is yes, here can have the faucet yes this is a specimen hold in the center and on the opposite side so they are not coming on the same one so irregular area is there that's why i told you this is the tubercles are there yes it is what the tubercles will be there and these are the five will be the ambulacular areas and five bigger interambulacular areas so this is about what we have the phylum echinodermata and in that we have seen the two uh, specimens echinus and the second one microster and the last one the phylum orthopoda and class trilobita so in this what we have is the fossil and here we have a lot of things are there yes the body has been divided into three parts horizontally as well as vertically 
so this will be the question will be there in the theory yes the, i don't know now whether it will be there in the fy or sy so that will be there might be somewhere it will be added paleontology now so the whatever the body is there body has been divided to three first upper part is a triangular yes it is a very hard exoskeleton exoskeleton is there and that is called as a head or thorax uh, sorry head or cephalon and the middle part somewhat a cylindrical in shape is called as the thorax and the last one again a triangle will be there it is called as pygidium so here the two triangles will be there top and bottom and the middle one is a cylinder so this is the three parts which are we have seen the top is a triangle one that is the head or cephalon then the middle portion is a cylindrical one thorax next one in the lower side we have again a triangle shape is the pygidium due to this horizontal division now i can make out the vertical division if you have these four lines we have been drawn and due to this now this is the divided into three so what we have the actual furrows and pural lobes this is the pural lobes and actual lobes so the body is divided into three parts and in that we have this uh, segments will be there pleurons will be there and that will be the body will be there now one by one you can make out here I say now only concentrate on this particular uh, globella this is, uh, so there will be uh, evolution in the globella there will be evolution in the eyes there will evolution in the genital angle that is the genital angle is there and genital spines you are going to see now this is the genital spine so there is the evolution in this eyes evolution is there this so many evolutions are there when you are going to see in the ty there will be the evolutions that will be the part will be there so this is the globella these are bean like a shape is the eyes are there these are the facial sutures are there this is the free chick and fixed chicks these are there then we have the whatever the outline is there it is smooth segmented body is there and in this segmented around uh, we have 25 to 45 segments will be there in the thorax and around about 0 to 15 will be there in the pygidium and pygidium sometimes it will be smooth outside and as you find out it will be spines will be there yes one or maybe in two number of spines will be there that will be going to show you the variations now in that the first one we are going to see the cast fossil that is the uh, first cast will be there that is not a fossil cast that is a calumine that is the phylum orthopoda class trilobita and the genus is calumine and is extinct now lower order vision that's why it is not easy av easily available for uh, uh, fossil for our department and we are going to try it out if you get it out then in the future batch we can show this particular specimen so the body is divided into three uh, means of two actual furrows middle lobe is actual lobe and the lateral lobes are called as pyramidal lobe that we have seen the head is semi circular central portion is called as globella eyes are small and prominent that is a bean shape facial suture optoporumary porion start from the genital angle to the anterior bodies genal angles are rounded yes yes this, this is what we have genal angle this is a rounded one and belonging to the free chicks thorax is made up of 13 segment pygidium is 6 to 11 margin is entire smooth margin is there yes and somewhere the middle part has been uh, depressed and ultimately end one part is there you can see shape is a very interesting one when you are going to see that particular part this is what we have the fossil with this particular diagram you have to remember because we have the two specimen we are going to uh, take in the lab this is one which is the calumine one and this is the paradoxite now paradoxite the outer margin is having the spines genial angle is there yes very genial spine which is there globella is very big length is long and from the top it is go on becoming narrow towards the bottom so it is a long body is very large as a length will be as compared to what we have the calumine so phylum orthopoda class trilobita and genus paradoxite and range is middle cambrian and body is large elongated narrow posteriorly held head shield broad semicircular with a broad and a long genial spines and sometimes the spines 
will be greater than the height also. In some specimens, uh, what we have genus, there will be spine will be greater than the height also. Globula broad in the front uh, with the two or four uh, four furrows on each side. Yes, that will be there, but here it, they are not been shown. Tarsal suture extend from the posterior to anterior side. That is also not clear in this particular part. Eyes are large, and you can see the eyes are shown as a large arch. Thorax will be 16 to 20 segments. Pleura grooves and produced into long backwardly directed spines. So here we have the spiny outlines are there. Pigeon is very small and plate like it has two to eight segments, and there is a tail is there. Yes, the tail will be present in that paradoxite, but it is absent in the calumen. Yes, you can see now the same diagram well, I have been drawn. This is my diagram sketch is there. So I could not get it uh, time so that I can make the scan. Everything we can do it. Uh, but whatever we have, I have been trying to show it out. What are the forms? Head, thorax, pygidium, actual lobe, pural spine, pural lobe, genial spine. Yes, that is the actual for us, free cheek, high fixed cheeks. So that will be shown whatever the specimens are there. With this, we complete this second practical, that is small one, because there are the three phylum, but there are the total six specimens are there. But the whatever the background which is required, theoretical background is a very, very important one, whatever the parts which are there. If you know the parts very well, one or two times if we go through this video, you will be remembering this. What are these uh, parts of that particular uh, phylum is there and how to write this particular specimen in the examination? Because in the end, what is happening? This is a new subject is that geology and first time we have been attempting and what to write because before that we don't take any practical test because we don't have a time to give you uh, any revision or we can conduct your uh, uh, pre-test. So that is not possible because of the short period of time is there. And now it is a semester system again. Time is a very short one. So I don't think you can get a chance. But I may from my sides, I'm always telling the student so in the practical how to write. I'll show them in one page, two spots. I will be normally write and show them that this is the way you have to write down in the examination and circulate it in my batch, whichever the batch is there. In that batch, I'm going to circulate so that students can aware and like that, they're going to write in the examination about this because here around 18 marks will be there on the fossil or 24 marks will be there because each specimen will be having the three marks. So at least eight specimen will be coming. So that will be there. So I hope you like this video. If you like this one, press the like button, share my video in your group circle and subscribe my channel. And without fail, write down your comments, how you like the video, what you want and what are the drawbacks are there or whatever my things, uh, whatever you require from my side, uh, give me the feedback so that I can uh, answer to your questions and accordingly I can prepare the new videos on the topic which you like and whatever I feel I can prepare. Thank you.